Wilson, wow. He Under fire from coaches, teammates, and the media, Zach Wilson may never snap a ball for the New York Jets again. The New York Jets quarterback started the season injured and missed the first three games, resulting in a one-win, two-loss record for his team. He was placed as a starter by head coach Robert Sala from week four onwards and managed to have a record of five wins and two losses. That's a better record than the likes of Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady from that date. So why is there a discussion and decision regarding replacing Zach Wilson? We have to go to the numbers to find out if there is a clue to this mysterious inclination. Zach Wilson's two defeats in his 5-2 record came at the hands of Bill Belichick's New England Patriots, a bitter divisional rival. In both those encounters, Wilson had a pass completion percentage average of 44.84%. That is dreadfully low for even a backup quarterback, and obviously unacceptable at this standard. Both those games happened in Week 8 and Week 11, but what if those two game samples were just anomalies? What about the times he led his team to victory? Those stats don't help to justify Wilson's cause as a starting quarterback in the NFL. His average pass completion percentage in those five wins is 61.15%. That is barely enough to warrant a starting quarterback position for a team that has legitimate playoff aspirations. What's even more baffling is that his last three wins have led him to produce incredibly low numbers in the passing yard stats, where he had 110 in Week 6 at Green Bay, 121 at Denver, and 154 at home to Buffalo. Under 200 yards passing is just not good enough, especially if those numbers aren't supplemented in the run game, which Wilson has 24 rushing attempts for 94 yards. Not exactly on the level with Lamar Jackson or even Justin Fields, but the most egregious stats is his touchdowns and interceptions, where he has four touchdowns and a whopping five interceptions from those seven games. But why is this a concern just after that relatively small sample size? It's because in 13 games last season as a rookie, Wilson had nine touchdowns and 11 interceptions. He also had the same total pass completion percentage of 55.6%. There has been no improvement from Wilson, not in his arm accuracy and not in his ability to win games. And to make matters even worse, he's not running as successfully as he did in his rookie season. You would expect a reaction from the young quarterback, something he could say to reassure the people that he will improve and that he will do anything to help the team win some measure of accountability. But check out what he has to say in a recent interview. When Wilson was asked after a tough loss to the Patriots if he felt that he had let his defense down with poor offensive performance, Wilson immediately dismissed the question and simply said no. The quarterback offered no explanation, no clarification, just a simple one word no. Well, let's see if Zach Wilson was correct in his assessment. Let's look at his stats in that Patriots defeat. Wilson threw the ball 22 times and only managed 9 completions for only 77 yards, resulting in a pass completion percentage of 40.91%. That is incredibly low and somewhat indicative of his overall performance in that game. You would think that Wilson might take some accountability and own up to his poor throwing performance. He had zero touchdowns, but in this case, he didn't throw an interception. That might be the one shining, albeit dimly, sparkling stat to his otherwise deplorable game. The pass completion percentage aside, getting only 77 passing yards is truly horrible for any quarterback at any level. But why wouldn't Wilson expand on his answer? Why did he leave the media hanging high and dry? Why suffer the wrath of fans who always demand accountability from their players? The reason is that Wilson did address the media two weeks earlier against the same team where the Jets suffered the same result. According to Rich Samini, Zach Wilson commented on his performance against the Patriots from Week 8 where Wilson threw for over 355 yards, scored two touchdowns, and had three interceptions. Wilson commented on interceptions 2 and 3 by saying, 
Every time I get out of the pocket, it just gets frustrating to just throw the ball away. That's what I've done the last four weeks to put us in a good position, to not turn the ball over and for us to win. And so I need to be able to keep doing that when something's not there. It gets old getting out and not seeing anything there. So there are a few things that we can interpret from the quote and later understand why he only offered a one-word answer in the more recent Patriots loss. When Wilson says it gets frustrating to just throw the ball away, he is taking a shot at not only his wide receivers, but also the coaching staff. He followed that up with his claim that he needs to keep throwing the ball away to keep his team in a good position to win, but added that he needs to keep doing that when something's not there. But it's almost impossible that something isn't there over 50% of the time, which is what Wilson is saying given his pass completion percentage for that game being at 48.78%. Someone has to be there open, ready to receive the ball, but it's clear Wilson isn't seeing his teammates. Clearly, his comments infuriated the coaches, and he must have gotten word from head coach Sala or someone in the media department to keep his answers to the press short. There's no shorter, more antagonizing word than no. A decision from the coaching staff had to be made, and it could go either with Wilson or against them. Which way did head coach Robert Sala choose? Sala decided to bench Wilson. The final nail hasn't quite hit the coffin for Zach Wilson, but for the time being, Wilson is benched. This is what Coach Sala had to say on the subject. Zach's career here is not over. I know that's going to be the narrative. I know that's what everybody wants to shout out, and that's not even close to the case. The intent, the full intent, is to make sure Zach gets back on the football field at some point this year. When that is, I'll make that decision. I'll take that day by day. The biggest thing with Zach and the same things we've talked about is the young man needs a reset. Robert added that Zach's decision making and his practice habits have been fine, but there are some basic fundamental things that have gotten really out of whack for Zach. This will be an opportunity for him to sit back, focus on those things, and find a way to reconnect to all the different things the New York Jets fell in love with Zach during the draft process. The Jets head coach even praised Wilson that this is something that he'll be able to do and conquer, but this will definitely be a small step back for him. But it will be a great leap forward for him when he resets himself and made it work. The Jets head coach also added, so this is not putting a nail in his coffin. This is not that, not even close to that. But I do believe at the end of this is going to be a rejuvenated, renewed young man that once he reconnects to all the different things that we're trying to reconnect to, he's going to show why he was the second pick. Coach Sala might have put a positive spin on it, but still, the fact remains that he benched his starting quarterback for backup, Mike White. He's a player who was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in the fifth round and 171st overall back in the 2018 NFL Draft. He ended up with the New York Jets because he was released by Dallas. Even during his time with the Jets, White never had job security. He was repeatedly waived by the team on numerous occasions. He wasn't any coach's preferred starter up until now. In the latest Jets game against Chicago, Mike White threw the ball 28 times for 22 completions, gained 315 yards, and had a pass completion percentage of 78.6%. He scored three touchdowns in the process and had zero interceptions. So the questions need to be asked. Should Coach Sala stick with Mike White for the rest of the season? Will Zach Wilson get another chance? And who would you rather start, Mike White or Zach Wilson? Please let us know in the comments below. But before you go, if you still want to watch awesome NFL content like this, please watch the next video that will pop on your screen.